Good morning. Before we get started with worship today, it is with great sadness, but also with great hope and the promise of the resurrection that we announce the death of Edwin Cook, who most of us knew as Sam. There will be a private funeral service for just the family due to COVID restrictions, but there will also be a graveside service open to the public this Thursday at noon at Woodbine Cemetery right next to Muhlenberg. We ask for your prayers for Audrey, his wife, his kids, their grandchildren and great-grandchildren as they grieve his death. The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship this second Sunday of Advent. It is a delight for us to be together in worship, even if it is digitally here. We hope that you will take a minute to say hi in the comment section of this video so we can greet one another as we worship together. One announcement for today is that today is Adventure Sunday. This is a traditional event at Muhlenberg as we gather to celebrate Advent and look ahead to the season of Christmas. Uh, it'll look a little different today, but we're still going to do it in the parking lot at 4 p.m. We'll hear a message from St. Nicholas. We'll get a bunch of materials that we can take home and use throughout the Advent season. And it'll be great to be able to at least wave to each other uh, in our cars as we're in the parking lot together safely uh, celebrating Adventure Sunday today at 4. We hope to see you there. It's for all ages. Today is also Commitment Sunday, where we submit our estimate of giving cards for 2021. This is an opportunity for us to celebrate God's generosity in our lives and give back some of that which God has given us. We'll be hearing a little more uh, around the time of the offering from Tim Wessel, our stewardship chair. Uh, but in the meantime, I want to get you thinking about that this opportunity to participate in Generosity Matters for 2021. And now, as we are in our second week of Advent, we will be lighting two candles on our Advent wreath. So we invite you to uh, gather around your wreath, or if you've only just got a couple of candles out, that would be great. And you can light them along this morning with the driver family. O oh God, we light the second candle of Advent. We seek your peace. We long for peace in our hearts, peace in our family, and peace in our world. We remember times we sought to know peace. In our family, one of those times is in the summers when we've had to do our, our moves with the military. Each one of those comes with its own struggles, and we often sought peace during those times. When the angel Gabriel came to Mary, she was afraid and perplexed by his words. Yet her faithful response helps to see the peace that comes when we trust in God. God is always preparing something new, and even where there is war and discord, whether between countries, within families, or within our own hearts, God is present, gently leading us to new possibilities. This Advent, we seek to know peace. Saving God. Look upon your world and bring peace to your land and your people. Help us to know Jesus, the Prince of Peace, and remember that through him peace is found. Amen.
Blessed be God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Do not be afraid, the angels proclaim, and yet we live bound by fear and fail to live into the promises of God. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Holy God, you promised to do great things for us, yet we do not trust you. You extend your mercy to us, yet we do not trust you. You lift up the humble, you fill the hungry with good things, and yet we still do not trust you. Forgive us, free us from fear, and help us to trust in the promises you have given us. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray, amen. People of God, do not be afraid. Hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free. Free from fear and shame, free from all that holds you back, and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened by God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, give to all the people of the world knowledge of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you. 
gospel telling from the first chapter of the gospel of Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in, Na in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin who was engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But Mary was much perplexed by these words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will call him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the kingdom of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be? since I'm a virgin. The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. The child to be born will be holy and will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible 
with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I had a bad dream the other night. I, I don't remember the dream, but I remember waking up abruptly, breathing hard and terrified. I, I don't know exactly what happened, but the dream left me feeling very scared and alone. And as I lay there in bed trying to calm my heart that was pounding through my chest and staring into the empty darkness of my room, that pervasive fear from my dream crept into my waking hours. I was scared and alone, even though the dream was over. Almost unconsciously, because I, I, I don't remember thinking to do this, I reached out next to me and I found my wife's hand. And that was it. Just contact with a hand and it was like a switch flipped. What a silly little moment. She had been there all along, and even so, her presence did nothing to change the terror that this dream had caused me. But still, in that instant that I found her hand, I found peace. In that instant, I realized I wasn't alone. There's a peace in that simple truth. And holding her hand, knowing she was with me, I was able to fall back asleep. There's a profound peace that comes with knowing we are not alone, and we crave those moments. It's why when I played baseball as a kid, I would step up for my at-bat, and I would look down the third base line to see my dad coaching there, clapping and offering his words of encouragement. It didn't change the fact that I still had to step up to the plate and swing, but for a moment I didn't feel so alone up there. It's why you call your loved ones when you're faced with a long drive in a car, or you Zoom with your family members when you can't gather for a holiday meal. These calls don't put them in the place with you, but I think they kind of do, don't they? For that time, you have someone with you. And you know you're not alone. And that is a deeply needed kind of peace. In our gospel lesson today, we hear of a similar kind of peace through presence. Our lesson says, In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. This awesome and miraculous display of heavenly glory was bound to make Mary feel small and insignificant, so it matters that the first words offered to Mary are words of peace in God's presence. The Lord is with you. Like a hand in the night. It's that most basic need of knowing you're not alone that God meets first in the calling of Mary. The angel goes on to say, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Do not be afraid. What a ridiculous thing to say. Look, I know, I know it's the theme of our whole Advent season, but what a silly thing to say. An angelic appearance is sure to be a terrifying display, as angels are not portrayed in Scripture the way that they are in Renaissance art as these pudgy-winged babies. 
Now, I mean, the book of Daniel describes the appearance of an angel by saying his body was like beryl or a fine gemstone, his face like lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like the gleam of burnished bronze, and the sound of his words like the roar of a multitude. And that doesn't even get into Isaiah's description of the six-winged seraphim by the throne of heaven. Mary had every right to be afraid. Do not be afraid, the angel says. What a silly thing to say. Because the angel then goes on to tell Mary, this unwed teenager in a highly patriarchal society, that she would miraculously conceive and bear the Messiah into the world. There's a lot to unpack there, but let's start with the danger. The danger posed to Mary, to her health, to her standing in society, to her life. Mary had every right to be afraid. Do not be afraid, the angel says. What a foolish thing to say. Almost as foolish as saying those words today. We have plenty to fear and distress us these days. From sickness to surges to hospital capacities to financial insecurities to the natural grief that this season brings out for many, you name it. We have the right to be afraid. And yet these foolish words are indeed spoken into our time. Do not be afraid. How? How is this possible? Are we supposed to muster up some hitherto unknown courage and pretend that everything is okay when it so clearly isn't? No. Now, the angel's words don't change the challenge of the circumstances. But in this appearance to Mary, the angel doubles down on one bold proclamation. Greetings, favored one. You have found favor with God. Yes, there is peace found in presence, as we have discussed, but there is something more at work here. At the root of this expression of favor in the Greek is charis, which means favor or credit, or oftentimes grace. Rejoice, Mary. You have been favored through grace. Rejoice, beloved, for God's grace is with you. Rejoice, Mary, for you will bear the Messiah into the world who will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. This grace, this love, this kingdom, this favor will be poured out on all people. This proclamation, do not be afraid, will be proclaimed across the ages through this Savior's love, that all may know his grace, his favor, his peace. When the angel calls Mary and calls us to not be afraid, it's not about putting on a face. It's about knowing in our hearts that we are indeed God's beloved recipients of God's eternal grace and that God is with us no matter what. While our task might be very, very different from Mary's, each of us in our own way are called to bear Christ into this world. Through every action, we are called to reflect his love and grace that all nations and people may be drawn to know the peace that comes through being beloved. Knowing this grace in our lives is what allows us to know peace. Knowing we are God's beloved is what allows us to know peace even in the face of our fears. See, it's not simply presence, the presence of another that casts out fear. I mean, we know that today more than ever. 
Just being in the grocery store, I'm surrounded by the presence of others, but their presence with masks hanging around their necks or not covering their nose it does nothing to assuage my fear. No, it's presence that is rooted in grace, in our God-belovedness that brings true peace. Because as I, as I reached out in the dark through frightful dreams, I wasn't just looking for the hand of another person. I was looking for my beloved. When I stepped up to the plate in baseball, I wasn't just looking for a coach. I was looking for my father, for his coaching and his love. When we make that call on the long road trip or we fire up our Zoom, we're not just looking for anyone, but for those we love who love us and have showed us God's endless grace through love and community. It's this grace that is rooted in God's eternal love that has granted favor to each of us, has called us to carry Christ's presence in word and deed, and bids us to rest in the promise of peace. Beloved, and you are beloved, it might seem a foolish thing in these trying times to proclaim these angelic words, do not be afraid. But in hearing them, I'm not asking you to draw on any deep well of personal strength that might feel dry in this season. These words are a call to know that God is already with you already claiming you in love, already finding favor with you, already redeeming you and redeeming the whole world, and already offering you a calling to abundant life here and now. We cannot manufacture the peace that Christ brings. We can only trust in the promise that it is already here. No peace today. Know that no matter what, you are not alone. God is with you and you are loved. Face fear, not with errant disregard for safety, but with an assurance rooted in the deep call to love others. The fears that Mary faced in this story are real, and our fears remain real. But the gift of the Messiah is the peace to face them with hope and love and joy. The fears may seem insurmountable, but the peace we are being offered is abundant, and it is enough. As the angel says, for nothing is impossible with God. A way of hope is possible. A way of generous living is possible. A way of selflessness and compassion for our neighbor that sees us through this long season of fear is possible. All of this is possible not because we are strong enough but because God is faithful to us without end. With the assurance of grace, may we join Mary in hearing God's call, knowing the peace that is rooted in our irrevocable place as God's beloved. May we join Mary in offering our faithful response. Here I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Amen.
let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Walking in the light of the coming Savior, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who await God's justice. Gracious God, you are our strength for today and our hope for tomorrow. In your amazing grace, you have brought light to our darkness, courage to our fear, and hope to our despair. Strengthen us in faith and help us to share this promise of hope with all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask your protection for sisters and brothers who serve the needs of our country and world at home and far away. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Guide us as a shepherd throughout this Advent season. Turn us away from the temptations of consumerism and lead us to see and respond to the needs of those in our community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear our prayers for all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit, especially those we now name. Hold them close to you and give them peace, comfort, and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for those who live by faith and have gone before us. Keep us steadfast in you until we join them in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We greet one another with the sign of Christ's peace in the comment section, through our cell phones, within our households. Let us share Christ's peace one with another. As we move now into the offering, I invite you to go to MuhlenbergLutheran.org slash give to make a gift now, and then also to listen in as Tim Wessel, our stewardship chair, gives us a few more thoughts about generosity matters. Good morning, everyone. I'm Tim Wessel. I'm the chair of the stewardship team and your new financial secretary. Stewardship, if you're unaware, is about using our time, talents, and treasures to further God's kingdom here on earth. It's the treasures part that I want to focus on today. In this year's stewardship campaign, we had members of the congregation talk about generosity, what it means to them, how it's affected their lives, and how they're living it out supporting others. This past week, you should have also received a letter from Pastor Lauren talking about generosity, more specifically, your financial generosity, and how it supports the missions and services of Muhlenberg for our members, for Harrisonburg, and beyond. With this letter was this card, an estimate of giving. I ask that each and every one of you spend some time in the Word and in prayer 
to discern what God wants you to give to Muhlenberg in 2021 and then get it back to the church as soon as you can. It's important for us to have this information so we can plan next year, but it's also important for you as a new or renewed step of faith in your relationship with God. So often we say, God, you're the God of our life, just, just not our money. But here with this card, you're saying, God, you're the God of everything, and I trust you completely. So, as we seek to follow God's will with the faithfulness of Mary, who gave her whole self to bear Christ to the world, may we too give generously so that Christ may be known in all the world. Never forget that your generosity truly matters. Thank you very much. Let us pray. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. Holy God, the beginning and the ending, our hope as we wait. We praise you for joining us to your people of old. We bless you for your prophets who call us to righteousness and promise a new earth with peace for all. 
for the word of your covenant. We thank you, O God. We thank you, O God. We praise you for the coming of Jesus, our Lord, who lifts up the lowly, heals the suffering world, dispels fear with hope, and proclaims your way of mercy and truth. For your word, who is Christ, we magnify you, O God. We magnify you, O God. Send your spirit on all who receive your word. Nurture our faith with your grace. Accompany us with your might and empower our zeal for your justice and joy. For your word through the church, we praise you, O God. We praise you, O God. All praise to you, holy God, today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Creator of the stars, bless your Advent waiting. The long-expected Savior fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit dispel your fear, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Do not be afraid. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. <laughs>